Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church. My name is Brenda Austin and I'm on staff here and we are just so glad that you were able to join us. We are in the process of learning our new live stream equipment and you'll see some clips here and there um, of some things that we have done and our, our hope is to be live streaming soon and have you all back in the sanctuary. In the meantime, uh, we would love to stay connected with you. You can go to our website at foomer.org or uh, find us on Facebook or view services on YouTube. We're talking about what it means to live in a life where there's been a resurrection. What does Christ's resurrection mean to us today? So come and receive the gifts of God. Let us worship. Good morning. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, please hear our prayer this day as we come together to thank you and worship you. We know our lives are precious gifts created by you, and we thank you for that. Lord, we know to cast our cares on you and to trust you, knowing you watch over us continually. Thank you for our health and our blessings but also for holding us close in the dark times, the not so healthy times, and during life's unexpected difficulties. Lord, we belong to you. We pray collectively for those facing grief, 
May they feel your comforting arms around them. We pray for those with health challenges. May they feel your healing touch. We pray for those facing tough circumstances, whether financial, relationship-wise, or any other earthly troubles. Lord, we look for signs of your presence in our lives. We love you and thank you. Please pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are in this series called Jesus Is, and our scripture today is from John chapter 11, beginning at uh, verse 1. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was, uh, was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Moving to verse 17, when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would, have, would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God the one coming into the world. This is God's word. Many years ago, a German artist named Stenberg was, was walking through the marketplace when he noticed a gypsy girl dancing. Stenberg asked her to come to his studio and sit for him. He used her as a model for the famous painting, Dancing Gypsy Girl. While in the studio, she began looking at other paintings that Stenberg had been working on, and she took particular interest in a painting of the crucifixion. She said, he must have been a very bad man to have been nailed like that. Stenberg responded, no, he was a very good man, in fact, he died for all men. And then the gypsy girl caught him off guard. And he was not expecting it when she said, did he die for you? Stenberg had never considered that question before. He couldn't shake it. Was it true? As time passed, Stenberg returned to finish that painting of the crucifixion, but not with a, an artist's eye, but with a believer's heart. Jesus said to Martha, Lazarus will rise again. And she said back, Jesus, I know he will rise again at the last day. But Martha, you don't understand, said Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. Believe in me and you will live, even though you die. Believe in me and you will never die. And then do you know what Jesus said next? Martha, do you believe this? You know, it is difficult to read this story and simply ignore it. Throughout our gospel accounts, Jesus, 
healed the sick, he cured the afflicted, he brought sight to the blind and sound to the deaf, he returned legs to the lame and, and calm to the storm. But the question is this story of Lazarus, what do we do with it? Now, I do not intend to get lost in the weeds with this story, but there, there is a few things to consider here. And for one, Martha is not clueless. She's not faithless. She believed in the last day. She also knew that Jesus, uh, if he had been present, that Lazarus would not have died. She also clings to this desperate hope when she says, Jesus, though Lazarus has passed, I know God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus wants Martha to know it is not the end of Lazarus, but he will rise. But Martha is thinking well into the future, distant, down the road. Yes, Jesus, when the resurrection comes, but who knows when that will be? And that's when Jesus interrupts. I am the resurrection now. I am the life now. You may die, but you will live. Martha, do you believe this? I often use this story of, of Lazarus at the graveside, the internment, the cemetery. As the family gathers at the casket, I will say something to the effect of, you know, I have often heard that the internment at the cemetery is the most painful part because it appears so final. But allow me to share some words of hope with you we find in the Gospel of John, Jesus, too, was at a funeral. He was grieving. But then Jesus said three words that altered everything. He said, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came forth, his hands, his feet bound with strips of cloth. His face was fully draped. Jesus turned to Martha and Mary and then said, did I not tell you to believe I am the resurrection and the life? Brett Younger in his book, Raising the Dead, he writes this. The unmistakable truth is that Jesus brings life. The raising of Lazarus from death to life reveals the immediacy of life in Christ. That is, that there is life in, in Christ now that there is hope in Christ now, that we have a future right now. Martha, do you believe this? Church, do you believe this? In the 21st century, in the age of medical advances as we are, do we believe in the power, in the immediacy of, of life in Christ now? I am convinced that there will be a resurrection in the last days. I'm not quite sure what it will look like but down the road, people will, will rise. But not only that, the belief that Jesus is the resurrection and the life now is to have a purpose for living right now. Not only in the future, but now. Maxie Dunham in his book, Jesus Claims Our Promises, writes, he writes about Jesus, the resurrection now. He says, because we live, because he lives, we can face today. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. We can face our difficulties. We can face the present circumstances. Because Jesus is the life now, there is always hope. And then Dunham goes on to name them. That if there is a barrier between you and God because of sin, because you have not sought forgiveness, there is hope now. If there is a wall between you and God because you have ignored God's call upon your life, that you've not been obedient, that you've held back, there is hope now. That if there is a wall between you and your spouse because past hurt has gone unacknowledged, or there is a chasm between you and your spouse because you've allowed the fire of love, of commitment to die, there is hope for your lives. There is hope for your marriage right now. It does not matter what the walls are. It may be a barrier between you and your kids, that you're not talking, you're not reaching out, you're not making an effort. But there is hope now if Jesus is the life now. 
that if your child is in the far country, one of riotous living, perhaps your heart is broken. There is hope now if Jesus is the life now. Your loved one is ill, you may be ill now. Your spouse has passed and left you to do this life all by yourself. That life is changing so quickly around us, there is fear. Well, there is hope now, right now, if Jesus is the life now. The list could go on and on and on. But here's the good news. Jesus is the resurrection and the life now. All walls are vulnerable. There is no wall that Christ cannot penetrate. There is no problem or circumstance that is too great. Because he lives, we can face today and tomorrow. We can face our present situation. Because he lives, we have a future. We have a present hope and purpose. We have a life worth living. Martha, do you believe this? Church, do you believe this? Or are you highly skeptical? Are you, un, are you unconvinced? What are you today? If this is the case, if you are unconvinced, Leslie Weatherhood says this, then remember the upper room. Take time and remember it. You and I go to the upper room on the night of Jesus' death. And you know, we try that door, but it is closed tight. And so we pry at that door and we're able to open it barely and someone yells, shut the door. The fear, the terror, you can cut it with a knife. The men inside, they are broken, disillusioned, they are anxious, they're frightened, there is darkness and despair. And so you and I, we shut the door and we leave the premises. But a few days later, we are back and we walk into that house and we cannot believe what we are seeing. In fact, this cannot be the house because the windows are wide open. The men are singing, they are laughing. No one minds the door being opened. It can be explained in three words. Jesus has risen. Up from the dead. This is what Weatherhead continues, says. Don't tell me that the resurrection simply means that these men are a bit sure that they can live again after death. They were laughing and singing. They flung those doors wide open, they did. Flung them wide open. They did not fear any longer. Their whole perspective was transformed. Jesus lives. Jesus is alive now. He is present. Resurrection, life is now, not tomorrow. Not someday. Not when you are six feet under, no. Eden Rapids first. Do you believe this? I close with this story. It's from the book, Learning to Say Goodbye. Ida Lachane tells of visiting a friend whose husband had died, had passed away. It was at the cemetery that they stood at the grave and for a while they shared memories, they shared stories. And then there was silence. No one had anything else to say. Suddenly the young daughter, her name was Liz. She ran, she did a cartwheel over the grave. And Lashane must have looked surprised because her friend, smiling, turned to her and said, Liz hasn't done any cartwheels since Bob died. He used to love it when she did. Lashane tried to understand what Liz's cartwheel to her father meant. Lashane came to realize that little Liz's gift to her father was to pick up the threads of her life and to begin to live as fully as she could because for the t there comes a time when, when, when you must do cartwheels again to express your joy in being alive. See, that's, that's what it is to believe Jesus is the resurrection and the life now. It is, it is embracing life. It is living fully, to, to just knowing in your gut that he is our hope now. That because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And all fear is gone. And I know where my future comes from. That life is worth the living because he lives. Church, Eaton Rapids, staff, leaders, you who call Fumer home. Do you believe this? 
Do you believe it? Amen. Hi, my name is Terry Marquardt. When I was asked to do the introduction for the offering this week, one word kept coming to mind, the word treasure. Matthew 6, 21 says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. What a treasure we have in Foomer. The leadership, staff, and people are a treasure to this community and all of us. Please keep this in mind as you consider giving this week. Thank you. Jesus is the life now. He's the resurrection. He is the life, your life and mine. May we go from this place to love and serve God with our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Amen. Have a good week, everyone.